Tonight, officials are warning sextortion scams are on the rise, where victims are blackmailed into sending sexual images to adults who are posing as teens, and they usually target males between 15 and 17 years old. Bayless Park Police Detective Ross Cheevy is joining us now with more on the warning. Detective, thanks for being with us. I think at this point in time, we're getting more and more familiar with uh, this crime here, but take us through it. How typically does this happen, and why do you think it is happening more often now? So usually uh, this is happening more often because there are more and more social uh, networking websites, apps, and things like that where victims are able to interact with and communicate with um, potential offenders on the Internet. But why, I mean, typically, um, I, I know you have some commonalities that, that exist between the, the victim here and the suspect. Can you take us through some of that? Because I think it's really important for families to, yeah. to know that. Absolutely. So... Most often, um, the offender and the victim will meet just through normal communication on these apps or websites. Um, and at some point, the offender will ask for compromising pictures um, of the victim. And then once they have those, they will use those um, to extort the victim for you know financial gain by threatening to share those pictures with colleagues, family, et cetera, on other social media sites. So. Usually it starts very innocent and it's, you know, just a normal communication. And then these offenders know how to ratchet that up and eventually compromise the victim. How difficult is it to investigate these crimes when a lot of the uh, the culprits are overseas somewhere? And, you know, it's, it's a very sensitive issue where I'm guessing you, a lot of the victims just don't report these crimes to police. I do think that these crimes go unreported a lot of the time. Um, our ability to investigate them depends on a couple things. One, how quickly the incident is reported to your local law enforcement agency. And the other thing is the amount of information you're able to provide to that agency, um, screen names, uh, user accounts, app information that helps that investigation along so that that could be followed up and possibly identified uh, with an offender. How often do you catch these guys? And, and what's uh, your most critical advice to parents as we wrap it up? It varies just based on the diff different investigations. My advice to parents would be just to, you know, try to monitor what kind of apps your children are on um, and who they're communicating on with those. Um, and then just try to have that open dialogue so they know that if there's some sort of compromising um, situation, they don't take that next step and pay the offender. Just That just makes this whole um, situation worse and it just continues the whole process. So as soon as there's something that's compromising, end that communication there and go to local law enforcement. All right, Detective Ross Chibi with Palis Park Police. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. Okay.